The North Atlantic Treaty Organization, or NATO, has extended its first invitation to join its military alliance in six years. Oh joy, and the death squad gets bigger, with far more cannon fodder. Montenegro, a small formerly communist Balkan country. When will you bloody Americans get your history right? Montenegro was never a communist country. Look it up, lady will be the newest of its 28 members. After years of fighting... Here you should have said encouraging or strengthening. ...an internal political and legal corruption to qualify for membership, Montenegro has finally been welcomed to NATO. After having been bombed illegally by that very same organization. Yay! But with this invitation comes old rivalries, mainly Russia. And when you say Russia, you really mean Vladimir Putin, because you put a picture of Vladimir Putin on, don't you? How about instead of Russia, you actually think what Russia is? It is a great country and a great friend to our people. Also, Vladimir Putin is a great man and a great, great friend to our people. But do not be so, how do you say, um, dishonest. And instead of Russia, just putting a picture of Vladimir Putin in, and how about, instead of saying that this brings on all driverless, instead of first mentioning Russia, you first mentioned the Serbian and the Montenegrin people who fought against NATO in a heroic war, an illegal war, that NATO decided was a peace mission. Fuck you! One spokesman for Russian President Vladimir Putin has even called this addition a mistake and provocation. But Montenegro is a very small country with a tiny military. If it's not a mistake and not a provocation, then why are you saying but after your statement? Oh, so but Montenegro is tiny. It's a, of a strategic position, lady. Look at where it is on the map. And no present conflicts. Their admission into NATO will not likely have any large ramifications for the organization. Then why invite it in at all? Why not just l let it be as it was for all these years? Tell me, why does NATO need tiny, tiny Montenegro? Eh? Or world as a whole? Unless Americans place a few ballistic missiles with nuclear warheads in Montenegro. Ooh, how about that? Yeah, here she just talks about uh, history of NATO and Russia bad, Russia bad, and so on. This is why Russia gets angry when formerly communist countries join NATO. Is that Honey, we've been over this. Montenegro was never a communist country, and neither was Poland, or Estonia, or Slovakia, and so on. Essentially, Russia sees NATO as an enemy. I do believe it was Putin, the one who said, that they do not see the West as their enemy and that they wish to work and cooperate with their Western partners. And, as I remember, it is John Kerry, Obama and that bunch, along with Merkel and Cameron and uh, people like that, who claim that Russia is the enemy. For no reason whatsoever, Russia has never done harm to the West. And Russia did not build up military... Uh, ballistic missile silos on American borders, mind you. And a potential threat to Russia reaching its former glory. Russia's December 2014 official military doctrine stated that NATO is Moscow's main existential enemy. And Russia's attempts to reclaim its former empire are not sparse. We only have to look at Russia's recent annexation of Crimea and its similar aggression against two Georgian provinces in 2008. Okay, stop right there, lady. Crimea decided they wanted to be a part of Russia by a referendum. They held a referendum and they decided they want to be a part of Russia and Russia obliged. Now, the two Georgian provinces you are talking about, they are not Georgian provinces, they are independent countries. South Ossetia and Abkhazia. They are internationally recognized and it was Georgia who in, in, initiated the violence and attacked those two countries, uh, attempting to annex them back into Georgia. Whilst Russia, who already had peacekeeping missions in Abkhazia, uh, was asked by both Abkhazian and Georgian governments uh, to come in and help uh, their countries remain free from Georgian oppression. Now, I know Uncle Sam pays your bills, but that doesn't give you 
a license to lie to the world and particularly to mostly probably young impressionable audiences who believe everything they hear on the internet. People, pl please don't believe these liars and propaganda spreaders, please. The U.S. has denied that the invitation has anything to do with Russia. At a recent press conference, U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry said, NATO is not a threat to anyone. It is a defensive alliance. It is simply meant to provide security. It is not focused on Russia or anyone else. Okay, stop right there, lady. Crimea decided they wanted to be a part of Russia by a referendum. They held a referendum and they decided they want to be a part of Russia and Russia obliged. Now, the two Georgian provinces you are talking about, they are not Georgian provinces, they are independent countries, South Ossetia and Abkhazia. They are internationally recognized, and it was Georgia who in, um, initiated the violence and attacked those two countries, uh, attempting to annex them back into Georgia. Whilst Russia, who already had peacekeeping missions in Abkhazia, uh, was asked by both Abkhazian and Georgian governments uh, to come in and help uh, their countries remain free from Georgian oppression. Now, I know Uncle Sam pays your bills, but that doesn't give you a license to lie to the world, and particularly to mostly probably young impressionable audiences who believe everything they hear on the internet people pl please don't believe these liars and propaganda spreaders please my dear viewers today i suspect we did not learn anything new but at least we learned of how americans think how even independent agencies somewhat independent anyway because Amer we know how american censorship and propaganda machines work anyway think and how they spread their propaganda and how they indoctrinate their people. How they try to indoctrinate the entire world. Do not believe them, my dear viewers. Do not believe their propaganda. Fight on.